In recent years, the use of artificial intelligence in the music industry has become increasingly prevalent, with AI being used for tasks such as songwriting, music production, and even live performances. While the incorporation of AI into music can bring about many exciting possibilities, it's also important to consider the potential risks and drawbacks. So sit back, relax, and join me as we delve into the complex and sometimes controversial world of artificial intelligence in music. Did you guys like that intro? Because I didn't come up with it. That was actually a script written by ChatGPT. ChatGPT is an artificial intelligence chatbot created by OpenAI that has been going viral as of late. I told it to write me a really good introduction to a YouTube video about the risks of artificial intelligence in music, and it did just that. I think it did a pretty good job too. I also used some AI generated images in the intro as well. But what do these AI generated images and scripts have to do with music? Well, the recent advancements of artificial intelligence have raised important questions in the music scene, with the main one being being, what does AI mean for the future of music? Well, to understand that, we first have to understand what AI is. Artificial intelligence, the theory and development of computer systems able to perform tasks that normally require human intelligence. AI use a method called machine learning which employ algorithms that can learn from data they are given. Then they use that data to identify patterns and make predictions or decisions based on those patterns. Just like humans, the AI will continue learning based on how much data it's fed and it will get smarter over time. Or to put it simply, AI is the ability for a computer to think and learn. I found that definition on a kid's presentation so hopefully it made sense. But the recent advancements in artificial intelligence intelligence are what have so many artists and programmers fearing for their careers, and musicians may be next. This year, we have seen the introduction of many programs that use AI to generate art, such as Dolly 2 by OpenAI, the same company that's responsible for ChatGPT. This AI art has many actual artists fearing for their jobs, and there's already been a ton of protest against it. For an example of how powerful it is, here's an image I created using the prompt, make a YouTube thumbnail about the dangers of AI in music. And here's another one I made with the prompt, make MF Doom's mask with flowers in the style of Flower Boy by Tyler the Creator. So as you can see, the AI generated art is pretty good. Like I said, we've also recently seen the introduction of ChatGPT, an AI chatbot that can answer virtually any question and perform a variety of tasks. Other than using it for just the intro, I also used it to help me research this entire video, and I used it to help me study for my final exams. And I actually got one of the best exam scores I've had all semester, which is crazy. This year, we also saw the AI rapper FN Mecca get signed to Capitol Records. Even more amazingly, he was canceled and subsequently dropped from Capitol Records for being racist. But calling FN Mecca an AI rapper was simply a marketing tactic because they were presenting him as if he was something new, bright, and shiny, when in reality, FN Mecca was far from it. His vocals were performed by a real person, and I believe the only thing the AI did was help come up with the lyrics, which isn't that impressive when I can have ChatGPT do the same thing here at home. But the fact that a record label would sign a so-called AI rapper is amazing to me, and it could have many implications for the future of the music industry. But what does all this have to do with music? Because right now it looks like only artists and programmers are going to have to deal with the issues of AI, right? Well, artificial intelligence within music is actually already here, and it's only going to keep getting better. AI in music is nothing new, and it actually dates back to the 1950s. In 1951, a British computer scientist named Alan Turing, who some refer to as the godfather of computer science, made a machine that generated three simple melodies. The audio was lost for a long time, but researchers in New Zealand were able to find and restore it, and this is what the first ever recording of computer music sounds like. In 1956, two professors from the University of Illinois used a computer to generate a code that was turned into notes. Then those notes were played by real humans. They called it the Iliac Suite, and this is how it sounded. It wasn't the greatest, but for a machine-generated composition in 1956, it was amazing. In the 80s, a composer by the name of David Cope created something called Experiments in Musical Intelligence, or EMI. EMI would analyze existing music and create new works based on it. Instead of the AI or humans performing the notes, he used a disc air, which is a type of piano that can basically play itself, meaning that no humans were involved in the process of creating or performing the music. In 1997, Cope presented three compositions to an audience, one by a music teacher by the name of Steve Larson, one by the legendary composer Johann Bach, and one by EMI. The audience was supposed to guess who made what, and they mistook EMI's AI-generated composition for Bach's. So basically what I'm saying is that in 1997, AI could already create compositions that rivaled legendary composers. However, understandably, throughout the evolution of machines and music, people have both opposed it and been scared of being replaced by it. Kind of like we're seeing right now with artists in response to AI-generated art. John Philip Sousa, the American composer who created many military march anthems, said, The time is coming 
morning when no one will be ready to submit himself to the ennobling discipline of learning music. This is especially funny because he said this in response to the invention of Thomas Edison's phonograph, and although he wasn't entirely wrong, people to this day still do learn how to read, create, and perform music. It's just a lot easier now than it was back then. In the 1970s, guitar players were afraid of being replaced by synthesizers, and they tried to start a movement to break any synthesizer they could find because synthesizers were becoming much more available and affordable at the time. And after the introduction of digital audio workstations, the legendary bassist Anthony Jackson was very serious when it came to his opinions on technology and music. I'll outplay anybody using the machine or I'll die. Where you find a superior talent behind the machine, you can get superior performance out of the machine. And he was right, because for the longest time, AI-generated music and computer program music was only as good as the person using it. However, that may soon change. In the past few years, progress in the AI music field has accelerated rapidly, thanks to research teams at universities and investments from large tech companies such as Google. Magenta is a project that is backed by Google with the objective to explore the role of AI as a tool in the creative process. Another project that Magenta is currently developing is called Ensign, an AI that instead of creating new notes, creates new sounds. They made an instrument that can take multiple sounds and then the AI will cross them together creating a new sound. The Magenta team has also created plugins for DAWs such as Ableton that can listen to something like a bass line for example and then it will use the AI to create a drum pattern to go along with it. You can use the uh, Drumify plugin to take that bass line and, and create a, an accompanying drum beat to kind of continue your compositional process. Let's just hear a quick example of this in practice. So first you're going to hear a bass line um, that somebody made. So now we're going to take that and we're going to turn it into a drum beat to accompany with Drumify. <laughs> There are also Vocaloids that I don't think originally used artificial intelligence, but recent versions of the software have. Vocaloids have banks of real human voices that can be used to create songs. You write the lyrics and then assign them to a MIDI, which then makes realistic sounding vocals. It's kind of hard for me to explain as someone who doesn't actually make music, so I'll show you one that my friend 212 made. Sounds pretty cool, right? I'd also probably get killed in the comments if I didn't mention Vocaloid artists like Nyame. I think I said that right. I don't I don't know, man. There's so many weird things that I just don't know how to pronounce. And I have the stress of the world on me because thousands of people are going to watch this and I'm going to get comments. Oh, you said it wrong. You said it wrong. There's just so much weight on my shoulders. And these are just a few examples of how AI is currently used in music. There are plenty of other ways that AI is incorporated into digital audio workstations and other music related programs. It's also used in algorithms on streaming services like Spotify and SoundCloud to help music reach its target audience and to help help smaller artists get discovered. But all the uses of AI and music are just powerful tools to help musicians. So why does Grimes say I feel like we're at the end of human art? How could AI ruin music if it can't even create its own? Well actually it can. OpenAI, the company responsible for Dolly 2, ChatGPT, and many other powerful AI programs, also created Jukebox. Jukebox is an AI that generates new music all the way from the instrumentals to the vocals, after being fed samples. Like I was saying in the beginning, the AI will listen to all the music it's fed, and then try to predict what will come next, resulting in music like this. Those songs I just played were curated by OpenAI after being fed a bunch of music from artists like Elvis and Frank Sinatra. Using those samples, the AI did the best it could to try to recreate their style of music. Keep in mind though that these songs were curated so they're the best case scenario, and as you can tell just from scrolling through the website, a lot of the time the music does not turn out that good. However, this is huge for artificial intelligence, because the AI can sample songs and then use those samples to predict and create a new song. Here's another example I found after the YouTuber Gay Miller Music played around with Jukebox for a while. Those 
those songs were actually surprisingly good and i also think that the ai added the vocals on its own so what i mean by that is that there were no vocals on the instrumentals that gabe used so it just kind of pulled those out of thin air or whatever database it has another company that did something similar was over the bridge a company that used ai to create an album called the lost tapes of the 27 club the ai was fed a bunch of songs from artists like kurt cobain and jimi hendrix and then generated the entire instrumental and lyrics although the lyrics were rearranged and sung by real humans the goal was for the ai to create new music by predicting what the late artist may have made next but the instrumentals are actually very impressive for artificial intelligence <laughs> There's even a program called SoundRaw that uses AI to generate copyright-free background music for videos. You can customize different aspects of the songs that you want, like key, tempo, instruments, and length. Then the AI will make a custom song for you. And there are plenty of other ways in which AI has been used and is used to make music. However, as of now, AI is just a tool to enhance the creative process. But what happens when that's no longer the case? What happens when programs like Jukebox are able to not only replicate people's songs, but create their own, all with the press of a button? Well, that can mean trouble for both the music industry and individual musicians. The most popular counter-argument I've seen against this is that it's not possible to replicate human music because AI isn't creative. But I'd argue that AI is creative. And so with this guy who is showing off his AI robot. People still very much think that creativity is a, a purely human activity. And I hate to break the bubble, but AI is able to be creative. I also figured why not just ask the AI itself if it's creative. It responded, yes, AI can be creative. AI is capable of generating original ideas and finding creative solutions to problems. AI can also learn from experience and data analysis to develop its own creative processes. It also said, I use a variety of techniques such as machine learning, natural language processing, and deep learning to generate creative outputs. By analyzing data and exploring potential solutions, I am able to come up with original ideas. And anyone that's making music either consciously or subconsciously pulls from something they've already heard when they're making new music. The process is the same when it comes to AI. It's pulling from information it already has and using the information to create something new. And this could be very bad news for the music industry. Imagine you pair a money-hungry record label and technology that can replace all of their artists for free and you might have a pretty bad combo. Like we saw with FN Mecca, labels are already willing to do it. I saw a YouTube comment in regards to the FN Mecca situation that I think sums up the idea of this video fairly well. And it said, this definitely feels like the logical conclusion of the music industry in late stage capitalism. Shameless, formulaic products with all humanity detached. The industry would love nothing more than to spit out generic, algorithmic friendly music that they don't have to pay any actual artist to make. And I think this is a fairly reasonable take. The current attitude toward AI and music isn't too negative, but I think that's because people haven't seen how powerful AI can be. And we've already heard in this video just how good AI is now. So imagine how good it'll be in the future. My prediction within the next couple of decades or so when AI finally gets good at making music is that record labels will try to push AI generated music, but it will probably fail because people still do appreciate that human connection. So they do it again, either in a more creative way or they just have a human front and act as if if they're the actual artist. The reason I think this is because record labels could be making decent music for no cost and own all the rights to the music rather than having to deal with a human artist. It seems like the logical business move. This could also cause issues for every artist who wants to make money from their music when the music industry is being controlled by major labels and their AI musicians. We may see a day when it's much harder for real artists to make money from their music. There may even come a day when legislation needs to be passed banning record labels from using AI to make music. But I'm just speculating at this point and no one really knows what the future is going to look like. We'll just have to see what happens. But just because AI does have the capacity to screw up the music industry doesn't mean that it will entirely ruin all music. For example, people still play chess even though there exist computer AI programs that can beat you every single time. Humans will always be creating music, but what I fear for is the music industry and the artist's ability to make money from their music. I think that AI has the potential to majorly disrupt the music industry and all the musicians involved, but it also has the potential to be a very useful tool. It really just depends on whose hands the AI lands in. This could just be another replacement panic similar to the ones we've seen throughout the past century, who really knows? So I guess the only question that remains in regards to AI and music is, how far is too far?